a very good morning to one and all present here i welcome you for the fourth day of this program so we have with us dr kamala rasi ma'am assistant professor from applied mechanics department sfnit surat i am very happy to welcome her on behalf of the department of uh, civil engineering svce and all the participants here it's my pleasure to introduce her to you all dr kamala rasi ji is currently assistant professor in the applied mechanics department at sfnit surat she had done her btec civil engineering from pondicherry uh, engineering college pondicherry university and mtech in uh, structural engineering from nit karnataka surat kal and also has done a phd from iit madras in 2018 so she is a very um, she is very meritorious she has been the gold medalist in the mtech program and awarded uh, the chirag ke toshi memorial prize for being poor and meritorious among all branches of final year btech program in her uh, btech course and then she has been also the uh, second rank uh, in btech and also been uh, stood first in all her uh, schoolings her areas of interest are earthquake engineering structural dynamics and design of rc elements uh, she has published uh, published many papers in journals and conferences and also won the best paper award for paper published in ici journal uh, she is well versed in stat pro e tabs and sap 2000 softwares like that so uh, i welcome you once again ma'am so we are happy that you are here uh, you may take over the session ma'am thank you thank you for the introduction um, shall i share my screen yes ma'am please listen let me know if you have you can see my screen yes ma'am i see good morning one and all present here so let us not make this session uh, very boring like only myself speaking additionally in between i wanted the participants to actively involve in question answer sessions so let's start with the first session on momentaria method i am given in this unit three under which we have two titles one is uh, momentaria method another one is conjugate beam method so initially before going to momentaria method i'll just to give the repetition of what you have done what you have learned so far in the previous lectures which will be easier for you to brush up uh, everything and then come back to momentaria method then we'll see so we'll solve some problems and then we'll go back to conjugate beam method <laughs> so in structural engineering to solve any problems we need to follow three steps that means if you take any building model or small elements like beams and columns first step is you will be taking that element as an idealized model and then you will apply the excitation if it is dynamic or static static means we will apply the load in terms of some huge weight kept on certain locations of beams or columns or in general buildings will be subjected to loading we will convert them into either computer model or simple one dimensional model in the hand calculations and then we will conduct the structural analysis finally we proceed to structural design to conduct the structural analysis we need basic principles of structural mechanics can anyone tell me what are those basic principles of structural mechanics that we need to keep in mind while conducting the structural analysis what happened no response what are the principles of structural mechanics we use to solve uh, structural analysis problems am i audible 
yes ma'am equilibrium equations okay equilibrium equations good next only equilibrium is sufficient that is for determinate structure for uh, indeterminate structures compatibility equations ma'am additionally you need to satisfy compatibility condition and constitutive relations so for totally we have to follow ecc where e represents equilibrium of force quantity c represents compatibility of deformation and then c on represents again constitutive relation so these are the basic principles of structural mechanics that we started learning from our basic uh, strength of material once you know all the three clearly then you can solve any problems in the structural analysis so here now we are focusing only on structural analysis using the principles of structural mechanics so we have three three steps where we take a real building we will idealize it into a simple frame building using beams and columns as one dimensional elements and either we model it in the software otherwise if it is a simple problem we will do by hand calculations so what is the first step modeling the structure then second step apply the loads for the applied load you will get either displacement or force quantities as responses so we use them to design the structure these are the three key steps that we follow in the analysis what are those basic principles of structural mechanism that we have seen that it is equilibrium of force quantities deformation compatibility and constitutive relation between force and displacement quantity you can see from here the first quantity represent force the second quantity represents displacement and the third quantity relates force and displacement that is called constitutive relation so you have to ensure equilibrium of force quantities what are the force quantities that you have known so far what are the force quantities if you are uh, creating equilibrium equations uh, what are the equations that you do reaction forces vertical horizontal okay moment. so that is only force equilibrium moment. then other one is moment equilibrium yeah so you ensure two types of equilibrium one is force equilibrium other one is moment equilibrium where you will ensure that you will construct the free body diagram of an object which is of interest to you that you need to find out the unknown force quantities first you draw the free body diagram and then you relate the force quantities there are another type of force quantity also which is stress related things there are strain related things comes in deformation so in this equilibrium of force quantities we use either force equilibrium or moment equilibrium to solve for the unknowns and then we get the corresponding stress quantities from the force quantity whereas in deformation compatibility we go for geometry of the deformation that means we take the displacement profile of the element that we are taking or the building that we are taking we use the deformed configuration of the building that con geometry and then we ensure that displacement at one point is same and that should be ensured throughout the analysis in order to solve the problem and finally we relate this force quantity with the displacement quantity that is which relating stress and strain kind of relationship so these are the three quantities we usually follow and use uh, for many problems to be solved for example if it is determinate structures i need to follow only equation of force quantities that is sufficient to solve the problems whereas indeterminate structures 
I have to follow all these three steps to be solved because I will have number of unknowns which will not be sufficient for me to do by only hand calculation by just using equilibrium equation. We need at least additional equations like deformation compatibility and the constitutive relation in order to identify the unknown quantities. So in that case, we have indeterminate structures. How many types of indeterminate structures we have? How many types of indeterminate structures we have? Huh? Hello? You know very well how many types of indeterminates you have. Either you have in terms of force or in terms of displacement. Can you tell me now? TK, number one, static indeterminacy, number two, kinematic indeterminacy. So what is static indeterminacy? That is related to force quantity, whereas kinematic indeterminacy is related to displacement quantity. Where in static indeterminacy, the unknowns are forces and the degree of static indeterminacy is represented in terms of static indeterminate structures whereas in kinematic indeterminate structures displacement quantities are unknowns in order to evaluate them we use the degree of kinematic indeterminacy or degree of freedom so far you might have used all these concepts and studied problems using simple methods to estimate the bending moment shear force and obtain the shear force and bending moment diagrams. But right now, we are going to see few methods that help us to evaluate the deflection and slope, where we need the use of the geometry of the displacement profile or the geometry of the bending moment diagram to estimate the deflection and slope. So one of the method is momentarium method and rest of the methods are also there and we will be seeing one by one in the lecture. So how do deflection and rotation arise in a building? Hmm? How deflection arise in a building? Loads. What happened? Only I should speak. Huh? Yeah, please tell me. Someone was telling something. Loads, ma'am. Loads. So, there are many possibilities that we get in to ensure that there are deflection arise in a building. They are loads, temperature effects. Suppose if we have fabrication errors, or settlement in the foundation. So there are many reasons that why deflection may arise. Basically what we are going to see is only linear elastic behavior. What happens to the real structure? There is always cracking and failure. When a beam is loaded until its failure capacity, you can see that the beam will be undergoing too many damages or cracking, either flexural cracks or shear cracks will happen to the beam. But in reality, when you do the structural analysis, you ignore those damages. That means you ensure that the load is applied, the beam is not undergoing any damage and only it is behaving elastically. So you are not considering any damage related thing. That means you are just seeing that if you apply a load, the system will come back to its original position after it is taken back. So the first assumption that we are going to make 
while doing the elastic structural analysis is that linear elastic behavior. That means linear stress strain relationship and small deflection. So when a beam is loaded until its failure, once its load is removed, will the beam regain its original uh, deformation shape? When a beam is loaded, it is undergoing too many cracks and damages. When it is unloaded, will it regain its original deformed shape? Hmm? No, ma'am, no. No, because it has undergone certain amount of permanent deformation, right? Yeah. yeah. So once it undergoes certain amount of permanent deformation, we cannot expect it to have a elastic behavior. Second thing, beyond certain limit, when you cannot control the inelasticity, the deformation may not be very small. It may be huge that you cannot do the simple structural analysis calculations. In that case, we have to ensure that the analysis that what we are doing, that is basically elastic analysis, with small deflection theory. So the concept should be linear elastic behavior, which consists of both linear stress strain relationship and small deflection theory. So we are not going for the till failure. We are just ensuring that the building, the beam is undergoing very small deformation so that it is in within elastic limit only. So it can regain its deformation. So why do we need that? To draw the qualitative deformation shape before and after analysis to calculate the required deflections at the locations of interest. It can be translational deflection or rotational deflection. Both are under deflection only. There are many methods you might have seen from the previous lecture. I think you have learned about direct integration method. Right? Yes, ma'am. Previous lecture might be direct integration method. There are many methods. I have not listed everything, only few listed, among which um, I am given to uh, talk about momentaria method and uh, conjugate beam method. These methods, including double, in, uh, means, uh, double integration method, all these methods are called as geometrics method. Geometric method in the sense it uses the displaced profile or pending moment diagram to obtain the required deflection quantities. So they are called as geometric methods. So in the first session, we'll see about moment area method. In the next session, we'll see about conjugate beam method. In moment area method, we have basic introduction. Then basic introduction about classical beam theory. I know that it might have been covered by now, but uh, just little repetition will be there. And then we'll go back to moment area theorems and few examples we will discuss. So basically this method is developed by Otto Moore in 1868 to find the deflection of structure subjected to pure pending action. It is usually used to solve the determinate and indeterminate structures. But in your complete lecture, we'll see only determinate structures. Our focus is to evaluate the slope or deflection of the determinate structure. We have two theorems for the moment area method using the geometry of elastic curve. What is elastic curve? By now, you might have known clearly. What is elastic curve? <clears throat> huh? When a beam deflects, we will get a deflected shape. Yes or no? Hmm? 
Hmm? When a beam deflects, we will get a displaced shape, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. That displaced profile within linear elastic range with small deformation is used to calculate the required response quantities. So that elastic curve is nothing but the displacement profile of the structure or element that is under loading. For example, in case of pin jointed, if the loading is applied, it will displace like this. So what are the two quantities here, displacement quantities? Translational displacement at the roller support delta and the slope at the extreme end theta. Among which delta is zero because it is restrained by the roller support. Whereas the beam is allowed to rotate where theta is not zero. The same thing is valid for hinged support. What about a fixed support? What about a fixed support? What happened? What are the response quantities that are restrained and the fixed support? Both deflection and slope are zero, ma'am. So both the response uh, quantities of displacements are zero. That is, at fixed support, you have both deflection and rotation to be zero. So these are the different curves when it is loaded and you will be ending up in. Suppose if it is a rigid connection like this, then subjected to loading inward and outward responses, then you will have your deflected shape like this. If you have a cantilever beam subjected to loading, you will have a deflected shape and bending moment profile in this way. What happens to this structure? What is the change in the deflected shape when compared to the previous one? What is the difference between the previous curve and this curve of the deflected shape? Hmm? What is the difference between this curve and this curve? What happened? No response. We can see here the deflected shape here has only single curvature. Whereas here one curvature in this direction and one curvature in this direction. So this is the inflection point where the curvature is changing from one to other. So that is where we get zero bending moment, which is based on basically the point of contraflection. So when there is change in the curvature, then you end up getting such kind of situations. We can see another type of elastic curve when it is a overhanging beam subjected to axial load means uh, transverse load here so this edge will be undergoing here yeah, hogging bending like this under lateral loading to ensure 90 degree rotation at the joints this is the expected deflected profile what is the difference between left column and right column What is the difference between left column and right column? Left column we have hinged support ma'am and right column we have fixed support. Yeah. So the deflection uh, here will be zero. 
One more deflection, thing is deflection and the slope is zero on the right support. And so, if slope alone is existing in the left support. Ah, slope alone existing in the left support. So, because of that, what happens? You have only single curvature in the left support, and there are two curvature in the right support. You can see here. This way, it is bending first profile and then next profile. So this is the inflection point. So suppose if there is one more frame coming, but with fixed support, again it will have double curvature. Since always joints are assumed to be rigid, we are having double curvature in beams also under lateral loop. So these elastic curves are going to help us to draw the method of estimation of deflections. So we can see here, it is a simply supported beam subjected to loading like this. That means there is going to be change in curvature because one is going upward, the other one is going downward. Then definitely there will be change in the curvature and we'll get an inflection point for that. Correspondingly, you can obtain the bending moment diagram. So, so far what you have seen is the basic concept of drawing a displaced profile. Approximately, we will fix in mind and we will get the displaced profile of the beams. On only simple beams, usually we will start with and then we will uh, get practice to go to the complex uh, uh, continuous beams all that. So you have studied about elastic beam theory. Can anyone summarize what did you learn from there? You have studied about elastic beam theory. What is the outcome of this elastic beam theory? Bending theory only. Euler Bernoulli bending theory. What did you get finally? You don't remember final outcome. Bending stress. What is the Euler-Bernoulli equation? You derive e I, e I d square by dx square is equal to m. Yes. d square y by dx square is equal to m by e i is m equal to curvature. Where d square y by dx square is your curvature. Right? So you, go, you have studied this, right? Elastic beam theory. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah, I'll just have a quick look at it and then we'll start with the moment area method. So, if a beam is subjected to bending, that is the concept. Considering only the bending deformation of the beam, ignoring the shear, then we are having the deflected profile of the beam. Considering a small element dx before and after deformation, we will try to get the elastic beam theory. Let us say this is the small element dx before deformation. If I have the neutral axis at location here, and away from the neutral axis at specific point of interest at a distance of y, let us say that displacement or length of this element is delta s is equal to delta x before deformation. At the center of this point, if I draw a tangent and with respect to horizontal, that is the slope at that point of interest. So it is located at a distance x from the left support. So we are taking the first step. And then after deformation, we can see that the delta s is getting shrunk. So the dimension is getting reduced, so we, call, we cannot keep it as delta s, we have to say it as delta s. So let us see it very enlarged in the next figure. 
we can see here in the delta theta from means this is the small element if I, if you just uh, draw a curvature I means to take these two points and join you get this radius of curvature and 1 by rho is called curvature and you know that you, m by e is equal to 1 by rho which you estimate after this elastic beam theory and from here you can see this is the deformed configuration whose delta s is equal to now delta s dash and this is the neutral axis dis displacement delta x so what is this displacement If this is delta theta, this displacement is y into delta theta. For small deformation, you can say that delta x is equal to delta s is equal to delta theta into rho. Ignoring this to be very small, I can say that delta x is equal to delta s is equal to delta theta into rho. So, I can write this equation as dx is equal to rho into d theta. Let us say this, this to be d theta, this to be rho, then this to be dx, then ignoring this deformation to be very small, I can say that dx is equal to rho d theta, where d theta is equal to 1 by rho into dx. Can I say that? What happened? Are you following? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. If you are not following, then I can stop. That's why. For small mm -hmm. deformation, we are taking a small element dx. Mm -hmm. Even this mm -hmm. extension will be very small. So we are ignoring that and we are taking it to be dx and d theta. So, rho d theta is equal to dx. Is it clear? From which d theta is equal to 1 by rho into dx. And you know very well 1 by rho is nothing but m by ei. And if I need only theta, then theta is equal to m by ei into dx. So then, if this is the beam which is bending, if I am taking a small element from here, and I just want to show that element deformation only here, let us say the curvature being represented as rho of x at the point of interest, P, this is the vertical deflection with respect to the horizontal x, then vertical deflection V. If I draw a slope of this point, at any point, if you keep drawing the tangent, this side, this angle will vary. That is the change in the curvature. So at any point P, if I am interested, ds, that is the length of this, dx and dy, then the curvature is related to them by d square v by dx square into 1 plus d square v by dx square whole power v by 2. This is from simple geometry that you have derived from the previous elastic beam theory. And ignoring the deformations to be very small, this will be very small. So we will take 1 by rho is equal to d square v by dx square. Therefore, m by ei will become d square v by dx square divided by this. So if we ignore this, then directly m by ei is d square v by dx square. So you know this is what is the elastic curve that you have studied so far and you have kept in mind to solve many of the problems. So m by a is nothing but the curvature which is nothing but d square v by dx square. So what are the sign convention? Sagging moment is positive and v to the left is going up and to the right the going down is positive. Then displacement in upward direction is positive, x direction positive, and the curvature measured in this way is positive. So these are the sign conventions that we are going to follow.
then finally so far we have seen for a small element for a complete element when you take it definitely you have to apply the boundary conditions boundary conditions can be force boundary condition and displacement boundary conditions here in this case i have showed you displacement boundary condition force boundary conditions if you apply the load or you can also say about the bending moment and shear force those are the force boundary conditions suppose if we have a indeterminate structure then you have to initially additionally add with the continuity conditions where displacement at the point should remain the same as per the original deflected shape of the structure let us say if i am interested at a point a here deflection say x1 is equal to a or x2 is equal to a the deflection should be v or when x1 is equal to a or x2 is equal to a the theta should be same so this is nothing but the compatibility of deformation which you need to satisfy when you have to go for indeterminate structure this is for your understanding now let us start with the problems that is related to moment area theorem directly there are two theorems in moment area theorem that is uh, moment area method there are two methods first method is to estimate the rotation and the second method is to estimate the displacement that means translational displacement so the first moment area theorem says that angle between the tangents will give you the if you want to get the angle between the tangents you find out the area under m by a diagram between b and a that means if you calculate the area under m by a diagram between the point of interest you will estimate the angle between the tangents are you following i am only continuously taking uh, huh? yes madam yes madam okay from here onwards starts with your uh, title that is uh, and uh, momentary method let us say i am taking a beam okay it is a simply supported beam it is subjected to some distributed load w i am taking a small element dx which i am showing here and i wanted the angle between two points of interest or between two points of interest if i am interested in point a and b here i wanted the angle between the tangents between these two points that means i wanted the rotation at within the points of interest so what i am supposed to do first to draw the deflected profile of this given beam under loading so i am drawing a deflected profile any loading whether it is a point load or a distributed load you are going to get a curve like this so fix the same location of a and same location of b draw a tangent to the point a and name it as tangent a and draw the tangent to the point b and name it as tangent b now taking tangent a as reference if you are measuring the angle to tangent b then you have to measure that to be tangent b a which is a relative angle that is measured at b using tangent a so that angle is represented as theta b a i wanted this theta b a to be estimated so what is the moment area theorem one says angle between tangent if you want to estimate then you have to calculate the area under m by a diagram so what i am supposed to do i should calculate the bending moment drawing of the given beam and between the points of interest i should find out the area of m by a so first i have to draw the bending moment diagram convert the bending moment diagram into m by a diagram and then after doing m by a diagram within the points of interest i should take that particular area alone and then i should calculate the 
required angle between the tangent so how to do that let us say if i am interested in a small element dx and in the bending moment diagram i am taking the same small element where it is m by ei diagram you know very well from the elastic theory m by ei is equal to d square y by dx d square v by dx square you can also write it as d by dx of d by dv by dx by taking ei to the right side now dv by dx is nothing but the slope theta so we are writing it as ei into d theta by theta dx and we are getting this and finally we get d theta is equal to m by ei into dx now if i wanted the tangent between point b to a then i have to define the limit from a to b and integrate the bending moment diagram means m by ei diagram it is not bending moment diagram it is m by ei diagram so within this area if i want then i have to calculate the total area which is nothing but the integration of a to b m by ei dx that we are getting from the simple bending theory so as per the theorem 1 if you wanted the angle between the tangents then it is nothing but integrate between the tangents the m by ei diagram and get the angle so that is the first theorem so let us go to the theorem 2 so first theorem is clear to you it is about estimation of angle between the tangents yes ma'am next we are going for moment area theorem 2 where we need the vertical deflection only in the previous case it is rotation in the next case it is vertical deflection let us say that vertical deflection to be tab the moment of area under m by ei diagram between b and a and this moment is computed about a so by the word you may not understand let me show it again let me take the same beam and let me use the same locations a and b and draw the tangents to the required points of interest and now i wanted tab that is the displacement of this point vertical deflection of this tangent right so what i am supposed to do take the m by ei diagram calculate the m by ei and take the moment about point of interest that means you are taking the bending moment and shear force converting the bending moment into m by ei diagram you are using the area under m by ei diagram to estimate the slope and you are using the moment about a point of interest with respect to the m by ei diagram and you get the vertical deflection so here this total area into this distance that is first moment of this area will give you the displacement tab so what is that tab is equal to xa bar into integral a to b m by ei dx that is the overall area is it clear so this is theorem 2 is this clear yes madam so here we have in if i am interested in tangent at b in terms of displacement at b then it becomes tba then my interesting point is here so i have to take this complete area into the centroid from the left to support or left to location where i am interested so that gives me the displacement at that point so if i know this then it is simpler for me to find out the overall deflection let us solve some problems to understand them before that if we have general case how does it look like let us take that same beam it is between point a and b now i have i take reference as a and take at a distance x some two points of interest 
having the length of the curve dx. Okay. So between P and Q, I wanted to find out the deflection. So if I just draw a tangent to two points, this distance is dt, which is nothing but x into d theta. So that is the total displacement that I have here, which I need to find out. So I know that dt is equal to x d theta, from which you know the simple expression d theta related to m by ei. And then while integrating it from x to x plus dx, that means overall length till here, then you will get x into m by ei into dx. Suppose if I am interested only in point p to q, then I have to put the limits from P to Q. So whatever points of interest you are interested in, only those points you have to take it as reference and do this. Suppose if I am interested in finding with respect to point A, then it will become from this point to X A bar, which we have seen in the previous slide. So integral A to X or whatever location I am interested in, then x into m by ei dx. This is general form. I hope you got it. Up to the points of consideration only, you should bring it. You have any questions? Okay. Let's just start doing the examples to get the problems. Number one, you are using bending moment diagram and convert the bending moment diagram into curvature diagram. And then you are using the concept of moment area theorem to calculate the slope and deflection. This is the concept that you have to understand. Second thing in the moment area theorem, you have to use that M by A diagram. And if you take the area under the diagram, it will give you the slope. If you take the first moment of that area, it will give you the deflection. So let us take a cantilever beam. As per theorem 1, change in slope, that is theta b minus theta a is equal to, what is that? Area of m by a diagram. So for that, I should first draw the bending moment diagram and then convert it into M by EI diagram. So I'm get drawing the bending moment diagram. If it is subjected to transverse load at the left end, what is the bending moment? P into L will be the maximum bending at the left end, isn't it? So you first draw the bending moment diagram. And then convert this bending moment diagram into m by ei diagram that is minus pl by ei so in order to get the slope you have theta a which is zero because it is fixed at the left end and there is theta b by drawing a tangent to b and the relative angle between these two is theta b a isn't it can we say that We say that theta a is zero because it is fixed support. Displacement and rotation are zero. Whereas here, it is theta b a, which is equal to theta b at this location, as theta a is zero. So theta b minus theta a is equal to half of the area of the m by a diagram, half of length height into this length. So L into minus PL by EI, which is minus PL square by 2 EI. You can see here, this is minus PL square by 2 EI because theta is taken as clockwise rotation. Anticlockwise rotation is positive. So negative means it is doing clockwise rotation. Now we got theta b. Any questions in understanding the theorem 1? Is 
do you have any question in understanding the theorem 1 What happened? Can I proceed? Yes, madam. So now we have to find out the displacement at the extreme end, delta V A. Using theorem two, which is nothing but first moment of m by a diagram about the point of interest. Now I want the displacement with respect to point B. So what I am supposed to do? Now I have to take the moment about uh, B. I have to take the moment about point B. So I have to use the m by a diagram. I have to use the m by a diagram and get the Moment about the point B. So the total load, total load of this M by A diagram is half into L into minus P L by A into two third of this total distance. So delta B A is nothing but delta B is nothing but minus P L Q by T E I. Our assumed direction of displacement is upward, so that is positive. So it is negative because it is going downward. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Now you are going to do for nearly four or five beams, different types of boundary conditions. So the second problem is a beam subjected to load at its end. Determine the slope and deflection at point C, where E I is constant. So the dimensions are two A and E A, and it is hinge and roller with overhanging beam. Subjected to axial, I mean transverse load P at the end. Let us say the deflection to be V C at the right side end. Now they are asking you to find out the slope and displacement at point C. So can anyone suggest this procedure? What is the first step? We have to draw the bending moment diagram of the beam. Yeah. So when you first you have to draw the bending moment diagram of the beam. To do that, first consider the displaced profile of the assumed displaced profile of the beam. So from here, you need to know what are the response quantities that you need to estimate. So as per momentaria method. You draw the tangent to A, tangent to point C, and wherever tangent to point C is touching, that is the relative angle between A and C. But I need only the rotation at point C. That means I have to subtract theta C A minus theta A to get theta C, isn't it? Similarly. If I take T B A as the displacement from here, and from here, then I can say that if this is T B A, then this will become three by two times of T B A based on the geometry of this beam. Then from here to the end, this location it is T C A. Therefore, the displacement from here to here will be from this tangent. Minus this tangent, T by two T C T B A will get me the total deflection at C. That means you cannot directly go back to the bending moment diagram. Before going back to the bending moment diagram, you should arrive at the basic equations using the deflected profile of the beam, and then from that, from the geometry of the displacement, bring out the expressions clearly. And then use the bending moment diagram to estimate theta C A and theta E A, and then substitute back in this equation to calculate the required unknown. So, what is the first step here? I have to draw the deflected shape of the beam. After drawing the deflected shape, I have to draw the tangents properly. 
my interesting point is the tangent at c so i am drawing the tangent at c so with reference to tangent a i am fixing the point if i need theta c it should be definitely possible if i know theta c a and theta a because theta c is theta c a minus theta a because this is overall and this is only for a then c should be theta c a minus theta c theta a this is the first step so next step is from here to here it is t v b a then if it is 2 by 2 2 a at a location of 2 a it is t b a at a location of 3 a it will be 3 by 2 t b a this is simple geometry using triangle you can use the concept and calculate this now what is theta a i can say theta a to be t b a divided by 2 a if i need the displacement here then i need to find out the displacement with respect to the tangent first so total tangent displacement is tca minus this displacement 3 by 2 tba will get me the displacement of this beam so i am arriving at another expression for displacement which is equal to tca minus 3 by 2 tba is equal to delta c so you you got the two unknowns delta c and theta c from the simple geometry of the deflected shape of the b now what you what is your next step first step is take the deflected shape of the b draw the tangents arrive at the geometry and estimate displacement and rotation relations clearly second step draw the bending moment diagram and convert it into m by a diagram third step as per this requirement if you need theta ca use the bending moment diagram between c and a and calculate the overall area of the bending moment diagram m by a diagram if you want a theta a then you have to consider accordingly so let us see one by one how to calculate theta ca theta a tba and tca to finalize delta c and then theta c is this step clear yes ma'am is this step clear or you need any more explanation here what happened hmm what happened shall we proceed Do you yes, have any question so far? Do you have any question so far? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Okay. Now, first step: we have drawn the deflected profile and got the geometry of displacements. Next step. to calculate the required rotational and the translational displacement quantities we are going to convert the bending moment diagram into m by ei diagram after converting them we are going to calculate the required points of interest now if i wanted here theta ca theta a then theta ba i need to consider the separate geometry of bending moment diagram so let us say that this is the bending moment diagram for the obtained beam which is simple beam only p into a will be the bending moment at this location since there is no loading here and if you take this to be p into a definitely from here 
based on the reaction you will get the same moment at this location so that is minus p into a you know right how to draw the bend, how to calculate the bending moments and shear force by using a simple determinant beam what are the things that you will do to calculate the bending moment and shear force of the simple determinant beams what are the concepts that you use Huh? What are they? Force equilibrium and moment equilibrium. So you get the force equilibrium summation of force in x direction or y direction to be zero. Then you get uh, shear force at these two points. Then if to get the another one, you will get summation of moment about a equal to zero. You will get the reaction at b. Then substitute in the force equilibrium and get the reaction at A. Then at this point B, bending moment either you can calculate from the left side or from the right side. So for example, from the right side it is P into A. So the bending moment diagram will be minus P A. Is it clear? <coughs> So let us take the one part of the bending moment diagram and another part of the bending moment diagram. Between C to B, half of this is distance A. I think I have changed and written. This is AB and this is CB. They should come here, they should go here. So half of 2A into height. That is minus P A by E I, this one, which is equal to minus P A square by E I, which is the area of this complete rectangle, triangle. Similarly, this one, half of A into minus P A by E I, so that is known to you. So, two different areas are known to you. So, what is the location of their centroid? From here to here, it is two third of, sorry, one third of the entire displacement. So, 1 third into 2A will become 2 by A, 2A by 3. From here to here, it is 1 third of A. So, it is A by 3. So, from the left side, it is 2A by 3. So, total X bar between from the right support is, if you add them together, you will get this value. So, now let us go back to the final equation which we arrived based on the geometry of displacement. Theta C A, if I need to do theta C A, then I should go to the M by A diagram between C and A, which is summation of M by A diagram between A and B and B and C. That means I am dividing this A to C into two segments, which is A to B and B to C. That like this, A to B and B to C. Like this, we are dividing it into two segments. So A to B, you know, it is minus B A square by E I. B to C, you know it is minus B A square by 2 E I. So you add them and get theta C A, which is the slope that you need. Then T B A, in this equation you found this. Then we have to find out T B A. If I want T B A, what I am supposed to do? I have to correspondingly go to that point B. So point B is here. So from here the distance is 2 A by 3. So, moment of area with respect to this point, so the entire area of bending moment diagram, M by A diagram into this distance. So, I am getting here M by A between A to B into X bar of B with respect to A B. That is 2A by 3. So, you got T B A. Now, you substitute these two here and get the reflection, I mean, rotation. Now again you have to go for delta C calculation. So you got theta C by substituting them. Now to do theta C, delta C, you have calculated T B A already here. You need to calculate T C A. So what is T C A? You have to go back to this calculation. T C A should be at the point of interest C. I am. So I have to take with respect to this distance, this distance, 1 to this, 1 to this. 
so that means a to b b to c likewise so it is m by a a to b into x e of a b plus m by a of c to b into x e of b c so when you do that you get the total displacement if it is negative that means this is acting downwards and this is clockwise rotation is this problem clear it is clear that it is going up downward direction and the rotation is clockwise so both will be negative and we found that finally we got both negative is this problem clear to you yes ma'am shall we go to the next we have here question 3 it is again a simple cantilever beam for which you need to calculate the slope and deflection where e and i values are given can you tell me the first step to proceed with now first step is first step is to draw the bending moment diagram first step is to draw the geometry of displacement and then you have to draw the bending moment diagram from the geometry of displacement only you will get the deflection relationships then you have to use the bending moment diagram to identify those deflections only so draw the deflected diagram and bend by ei diagram then as usual if i am interested in tba or theta ba what is the question given it is specifically at point b and c that means here and here so i go to point b and i go to point c this is the deflected profile i draw the tangent at point b if i am interested in point b tangent at point a is here and the slope is zero at right point a so the angle which i am getting here is completely theta ba only what i'll do area under m by ei diagram between point a and b that means here will give me the slope at point b so that is area of this location will give me the rotation which is taken as here now i wanted at point c then again the slope at point a is zero so theta c minus theta a is theta a is zero so theta c alone exist so which is nothing but the area of the complete bending moment diagram so i am taking the complete bending moment diagram between a and c next to estimate the displacement between the two points a and b so the tangent here is this delta b alone i am interested then first moment of area with respect to point b alone i should take so one is i am dividing this entire system into one rectangle and one triangle and area of this into half of this distance plus area of this into two third of this distance will give me the bending moment moment of area of m by ei diagram so that is this so i have calculated the area of that here that is shown here and finally simplified value is written here and given the displacement similarly for delta c here the overall area is calculated the location of cg is known to you that into this distance will get you the displacement negative represents downward movement of the deflection next problem determine the slope and deflection at point p and c of beam shown in figure see here after only problems will be shown but the same procedure first you have to draw the deflected shape and draw the geometry of the deflected shape draw the tangents with respect to the required points 
and try to get the specific expression and after getting the required expression then you start drawing the m by i diagram and start calculating the required unknowns so the same way here you can see this is a beam with two different i values whereas beam ab has i value 8 into 8 power 6 10 power 6 whereas beam ipc is equal to 4 into 10 power 6 that is the moment of inertia or the second moment of area is so much so we are taking i ab is equal to two times of i b c this beam is subjected to a bending moment or a rotation moment as 500 newton meter at the right side support now what we are doing draw the deflected shape it is asked to find between p and c so i have to draw first tangent at b find out one relationship tangent at c find out another relationship so in your case it is simpler when you draw in terms of a cantilever beam because tangent a is always horizontal where theta a is zero so in that case simplifying the expression using the deflected shape will be very very easier so you can just take the bending moment diagram of the applied load so applied moment is 500 so the edge moment will be 500 newton meter and if you draw the m by e i diagram by normalizing this entire i value where i a b is equal to 2 times of i b c you will get the bending moment profile like this this is reduced because i a b is 2 times of i b c so you got this value now to calculate at point b moment a moment about this means area of this m by e i diagram will give me the slope here again area at complete theta c a from here plus this will give me the total theta c if i need displacement again moment of area with respect to point b till here whereas if it is for the complete beam then plus this plus this complete at this distance delta c i'll get here you can see it clearly if the displacement is positive then the beam is going upward because the applied moment is just taking the beam in the upward direction next problem is to determine the slope and deflection at point c of the simply supported beam we can see here draw the displacement profile your point of interest is point c so that means at this location i need to find out this tangent so you have two tangents c and horizontal tangent that is d it is symmetrically loaded so tangent d here is this basically here uh, at this location if it is symmetrically loaded then theta c is equal to theta dc this is the geometry that you are going to calculate out of this understanding then now if you use the bending moment diagram and then estimate the area of the bending moment diagram at the required point you will get the slope and deflection so that is what is clearly given here one by one step so this is for rotation we can see for translation if i just draw a tangent from a to b then it is tba and you can see here this is delta c and this is delta t tca means with respect to this tangent c if i take this point to be delta dash which is the overall displacement at a distance of delta dash by 3 is equal to tba by overall displacement 12 now you have to use the displaced configuration and find out the relation that means delta dash at point c with respect to the tangent at t means with respect to the tangent at a and with respect to the tangent at c there is small displacement here and this is delta c let us take the small delta to the small displacement to be tca when the overall displacement is delta dash so 
so delta dash at a distance of 3 divided by tba at a distance of 12 then start inputting the required parameters and find out those parameters from the moment of area about this value see here tba they are converting it into 1 by 4 tba if i want delta c alone then delta dash minus tca i need to do so that is 1 by 4 tba minus tca now i have to find out tba and tca you have to do tba means complete beam you have to take tca means from c to a alone you should take so in one bending moment diagram you will calculate only till here in other one you will take the complete bmd so that is what is done here for estimating the slope delta dc only these two points are considered because delta c is equal to delta d as it is symmetric theta c and theta d will be equal so we found the first relation directly area of the bmd between these two points next one to get tca between t a and c alone you have to do the moment of area next between a and b you have to do for the complete area and then substitute back in this equation if it is positive then that is anti clockwise moment and this is downward reflection there are these are simple problems i'll give it to the organizers where you can give this ppt to them they can just learn by looking at this ppt the same way use the geometry and get the relationship between slope and displacement based on geometry of displacement and then use the bending moment diagram to calculate the required rotational quantities and displacement quantities. There are many examples given to you. This example anyway I will be discussing for conjugate beam method. That time we will look at this. All this, uh, this complete presentation I will give it to your uh, coordinators. You have any queries? you have any queries see i have stopped my presentation because i am not getting much response from you that's why i stopped uh, giving explanation one by one but the overall procedure is this only you have to draw the displacement profile everybody says directly go to the bending moment diagram that is not right first to draw the displacement profile draw the tangents to the required points of interest and bring the relationship between the displacement quantities and then go to the m by ei diagram and then start calculating the required slope or displacement if you have any questions you can clarify anyway this presentation i'll be giving it to the coordinators you can collect it from them any questions no ma'am no okay so by next session we will start with the conjugate beam method we have only um, a concept of conjugate beam method and four more examples will be explained to you thank you okay ma'am thank you ma'am